Hey, what's up you guys? It's Bjorn from Triassic Park Traps again and today we are going to set up a new tank. Uh, the last tank I set up was a Traps Cancroformus Simplex colony. Um, those were the children of Frosty the Cancroformus Simplex uh, Traps that was really special to me. If you want to know more about these, have a look on my channel, there are plenty of videos about them. Um, so next up, uh, what I want to talk about is, uh, usually I always set up a tank with a hatchery I fill up the aquarium with tap water and because I didn't have enough access to uh, rainwater back at the back in the time back in the days and I developed a method where I could fill up an aquarium with tap water add a hatchery on top of it let me get give me a second and I'll grab a hatchery for you guys I use these containers as hatcheries. These are dried uh, hatcheries right now. Uh, I will reuse these in the future. Um, but that's what I was always doing. And I was kind of wondering if I could do it different this time. So um, it's also because I actually found a bucket full of gravel that is possibly about one or two years old. And uh, unfortunately, it was not uh, labeled. There was no sticker on it telling um, what kind of uh, gravel it actually was. So it's actually a complete mystery what, is, what I'm going to hatch this time. And uh, I actually got something new as well, uh, which is the RO, uh, reverse osmosis uh, filter uh, device, which I can uh, hook on my uh, tap. Um, and basically, it turns my tap water in uh, zero TDS, uh, total dissolved solids, um, water. Uh, and it basically simics, um, mimics, excuse me, it mimics, um, yeah, simics, uh, it mimics uh, rainwater actually. So the thing is that I can basically uh, produce some fake rainwater right now and the thing is um, rainwater in na nature also has around let's say 0 or 10 TDS and uh, that's basically the amount of minerals and uh, dissolved solids inside the water. If I use tap water there is actually 190 uh, total dissolved solids inside that water. So that's way too high and the uh, traps actually the eggs will not hatch because that's uh, water that's way too mineral uh, that has too, way too minerals in it and it will just not work because traps in nature actually hatch on rainwater as well. So the thing is we are going to uh, mimic um, uh, rainwater by using reverse osmosis water this time and um, we're just going to take a quick look, look at the reverse osmosis setup uh, gonna show you guys what it is and what it does and uh, next up we're going to set up this little tank with some mystery gravel and uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up uh, this type of uh, colony with a different method than usual usually we would use the Triassic Park Triops hatching um, floating hatchery method with the floating hatchery on top, transferring them after several days. But the thing is, when I was transferring some trials, sometimes they actually die. Some of them will die because the transfer is a little bit too hard on them. So this time I was thinking about, let's set up a tank, which will be the instant his like will be uh, uh, instantly will become a hatchery, but will also become the permanent tank at the same time uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, fill up the tank really um, with not too many not too much water not uh, completely till like up to the top which is gonna add about like half of it uh, maybe a little bit less just enough uh, so the element uh, the heating element will not burn out or um, will crack eventually uh, break down because the water level is too low um, I just want to make sure that it's at least um, uh, even with the blue um, button that's uh, the blue knob that's on there uh, basically it's uh, to uh, set the temperature of the heating of the heater and um, we just need to make sure that it's definitely not going to float or anything. I added some uh, pots, some uh, plant pots to the outer uh, shell of the heater just to make sure that the traps will not actually bump into it and that this thing is not going to shake around. I actually lost uh, the suction cups of this heater so I had to uh, make a DIY 
uh, cover to make sure that it's not gonna bounce up into the glass and break eventually so that's just something uh, I had to fix just now uh, not the best uh, type of uh, fix but it's what I got right now so uh, we're gonna take a look at the reverse osmosis uh, device right now um, give me a second be right back so this is the reverse osmosis uh, filter that I'm using. It's a Denale uh, Osmos Professional uh, 190. It's uh, like a, uh, I think it's a beginner type of uh, RO filter, but it's fine. It actually gives me zero TDS water, uh, which I'm going to show you guys. Give me a second. Um, this is a TDS meter and an uh, EC meter. I'm just going to use TDS right now. I'm going to show you guys that it's actually completely pure water. Zero TDS. So there are actually zero minerals inside this water. Basically just like rainwater. And that's something new. I was actually always using uh, tap water for the aquarium and using rainwater actually pure rainwater from outside for my hatcheries thing is uh, I had to transfer them from uh, rainwater to uh, aquarium water uh, tap water and that was sometimes a little bit hard on the triops and they were sometimes struggling because of the transfer so we we're not going to do that this time we're going to use our O water this time I will add some minerals over time because triops definitely do some need some minerals but the gravel I'm using is actually old gravel and it might actually have some minerals on it so it might actually leach into the aquarium which is fine and um, we will have at least some minerals inside the water let's move back to the setup so we're back at the setup and in front of me there are some decorations and some plants well not plants there are I got some moss, some moss balls, um, some leftovers from a catapa leaf. This will act as detritus. We got some uh, twigs and some spider wood that was actually inside the cancroformis setup. So it actually has some beneficial bacteria on it. Uh, it was inside the water just like one hour ago or something. So we're going to use that again. I got a little um, catapa bark cave as well, which I like to add to the setup. It's just fun. It looks like a little home for the little triops to uh, live in. Um, what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to fill up this tank with the gravel that I got. Um, but first we're going to take a look at that gravel. So give me a second. So this is basically the gravel that I got. So I kind of um, don't know what's inside here. Um, it's really old gravel. Uh, the amount of gravel actually is quite a lot of gravel. So I think this is coming from a 60 liter tank. Uh, from a larger colony, so I'm really wondering what's actually inside here um, It's gonna be a mystery. So I will be setting up the tank at 24 degrees Celsius will, which will be okay for can traps cancroformis uh, To hatch it will not be too high that will actually that it will actually kill them and 24 degrees Celsius will also be okay for long and Australiensis species So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use the gravel from this bucket the mystery gravel and I'm going to add it to the tank. There will be a lot of eggs inside this gravel so if there are too many eggs floating at the surface I will actually remove some of them. I don't want to, too many of them to hatch because I don't want to overcrowd a tank uh, that I'm the, the tank that I'm using. So that was gonna be, that's gonna be the next step. I will fin uh, I will fill up the tank a little bit. Give me a second again. So I just uh, filled up the tank with some gravel, the mystery gravel that I uh, just showed you guys from the bucket. Um, I'm really wondering what's going to be inside guys. I'm so excited to see what's going to hatch and how many of them are going to hatch. Um, as you can see the tank is still empty. Uh, I just went uh, ahead and added some decorations. Uh, we got some Marimo moss balls in the front. Uh, up here some marimo moss balls tiny versions uh, we got a little uh, katepa bark um, little like a dome uh, not sure what it's going to call uh, a tunnel let's say it's a little tunnel, a little home for the tribes i added some katepa uh, the skeleton of a katepa leaf which is basically going to act as detritus for the little tribes to munch on uh, we got some Christmas moss on a rock. It's uh, tied with some uh, fishing wire. 
I'm just going to try to uh, keep it alive and make sure <laughs> that the traps are going to eat some. Uh, that's, that Well, it's basically a little place for them to graze on, uh, eat some algae of it. And we got just a piece of rock, uh, wood uh, just to make sure that they have some uh, place to eat algae from as well. Uh, there is some old dried algae on top of this uh, piece of wood. So I hope this will actually have some beneficial uh, algae and bacterial cysts on it that will act as detritus as well. I'm not completely sure if this piece of wood is going to float or not, but we will see that very soon. We will find out that very soon. Um, I'm just going to fill up the tank with some uh, reverse osmosis water right now, uh, which is one of the new steps that I'm going to try. Um, I'm just going to add some sponge to the tank and make sure that the gravel is not going to float away. And we will see how many eggs there are actually inside this gravel. That's going to be a surprise as well. Give me a second guys while I'll fill up this little tank. Uh, so yeah, I actually filled up the tank and this actually happened. I was kind of expecting these guys. This is from a big ass colony. Look at all the mags. God damn. That's actually a ton of eggs that I just tr added to a tank. That's way too small to actually house all of these eggs. So next step is actually removing at least let's say 90% of the eggs because this is a harvesting amount of eggs actually look at all the rows of eggs everywhere damn that's crazy guys look at all these eggs whoa okay um okay okay so uh, we got actually way too many eggs right now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and remove most of the eggs. I'm just gonna show you guys uh, what I harvested just now. No worries, the heater is not turned on yet, so actually they cannot hatch right now. Uh, I did this as a precaution just to make sure that they are not gonna hatch right now. Look at the amount, this is just like at least 400 eggs or something, at least on the heater right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove most of the eggs right now. <laughs> Give me a second, guys. Well, at least uh, I'm saying a second. This actually might take an hour or something. <laughs> so be right back, guys. <laughs> So I am back, I removed most of the eggs right now and this is the actual harvest that I got from the tank. A crazy amount of eggs actually. Look at all these eggs. That's crazy. Damn. The amount of eggs. If I would have hatched this, I probably would have had like several thousands of traps in this tank and that would have been way too many traps. So I'm glad I actually was able to remove most of the eggs. I'm gonna dry these out and uh, let's see what they actually are. Um, I'm really wondering what tribe species this is, but I actually uh, think it's going to be a Longicadotus or a Australiensis uh, variety or species because mostly uh, the tribe's eggs on cankerformis species are way darker than the Longicadotus and Australiensis eggs. So actually, it could be uh, Australiensis aurum, it could be Triops Longicadotus. Um, it could be Australiensis silver, it could be anything from the Longicadotus or Australiensis breed, I think. Um, but when I look at the amount of eggs that I harvested, I actually am pretty sure that it is from a 60 liter tank because this is a crazy amount of eggs that I got over here. It actually looks like a skin, but that's because I was tapping on this little... Uh, uh, dish <clears throat> excuse me and when i tap on this little dish uh the eggs actually start to connect to each other i'll show you guys let's see if i can show you 
Let's see, if I tap on this little dish, they will actually start to connect a bit more. See? They will actually start moving towards each other and start connecting to each other. Filling in the gaps. It's actually funny to watch if they are not connected together. But you get the idea. Um, so currently I'm actually pretty happy with the results. And um, this is what the tank is looking right now. This is how the tank is looking right now. Excuse me, guys. So that looks pretty great. Um, I actually turned on the heater just now. Um, we're definitely going to need like 24 degrees Celsius. I'm going to leave the lights on for the night. And uh, that's basically how I set up a uh, full tank uh, setup from right from the start. Just uh, gravel from a previous colony. It should have beneficial bacteria on it. And I actually read that it's actually beneficial to use gravel from the old colony when you're setting up a new colony as well. I hope that's true. We're going to find out very soon when this tank is going to hatch some trials for us. And uh, I'm going to try to keep you guys updated on how this uh, little project is going to uh, develop in the future. Uh, it is new. It's filled with osmosis, reverse osmosis water right now. So it's definitely interesting to see if traps are capable of hatching in there and surviving for the first several days. Um, what I will do as well uh, is adding some Bacter AE. This is a product from Glass Garden. It is actually made for uh, baby shrimp, uh, but I'm going to use it for the baby triops in this case. Uh, it's not sponsored. It's also a product I bought for my uh, shrimp tank. And uh, this is the first time I'm going to use it with triops. Uh, I'm actually uh, hoping that it will help out with uh, forming some um, biofilm in the beginning. Bacter AE is basically a powder form um, uh, mix or something that will actually help with uh, developing uh, beneficial bacteria, enzymes and um, uh, biofilm in your uh, aquarium that will be edible for your little um, juvenile and nobles, juveniles and nobly triops. So I'm going to use this, uh, just a tiny scoop on the aquarium, and uh, that's basically it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, it was quite a long video, but I hope you guys enjoyed it and stayed uh, through it to the end. Um, let's see in the future what this uh, setup will bring us, and uh, I hope to see you next time. Um, also, I would like to ask you guys, if you passed all through the video, uh, feel free to subscribe to the Triassic Park Trials channel. Feel free to put a thumbs up on this video it would really help the channel out so i hope you guys enjoyed it hope to see you next time